Hello, I'm Eric Snodgrass, and thank you for watching today's Midday Western U.S. Regional Forecast video brought to you by Nutrient Ag Solutions. Well, we've got to start off this video by talking about uh, the all-hazards weather map that's here from weather.gov. Uh, a storm system, a powerful storm system, is right now is taking shape in parts of the Pacific Northwest, and it is going to cause some major problems for production agriculture across this area. Uh, that storm system will be stretching into the Canadian prairies and not only bring with it some big-time snow for parts of Montana and much of the northern Rockies, but also some bitterly cold air behind it, which is uh, far from normal for this time of year. Meanwhile, to the south of it, we are dealing with the risk of, of very strong winds, potential for fire uh, with this system, and all along the coast you can see there are gale warnings. So I want to dig right into this and get right to the main point because what we're seeing first of all with our temperatures playing out could potentially be problematic, especially in the Pacific Northwest, because we will be seeing some temperatures get down below freezing in our valleys, which is going to be quite important for a lot of our crops. I'm really specifically thinking about about um, the efforts put in right now to harvesting uh, wine grapes. And we'll talk more about that in just a few seconds. What do we have here? We are looking at Friday morning's uh, temperature departure from normal. So this is high temperatures on the day on Friday, differences from normal. We can already see that much of the Western United States will be anywhere between five and 20 degrees cooler than average. And this is just the beginning. The storm system doesn't fully take shape until the weekend. So if we get into Saturday, look at the differences here. As that deeper trough sweeps in, we'll be seeing uh, high temperatures that may be more than 30 degrees cooler than average stretching from northern California, northern Nevada, all the way through Montana. And the problem is, is this is high temperatures. If the lows are that much colder than normal as well, we're talking about widespread frost and freeze risk. Look at Sunday's differences from normal. Across the western United States, anywhere between 15 and 35 degrees colder than average. If we just keep playing this through, we get into Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. Wednesday, I mean, you look at the map like, oh, that's better. It's only 10 degrees cooler than average. Well, this is still much below average compared to, to this time of year. This pattern will likely not break down until next end of next week, maybe next weekend. And where the snow sits, it's going to take a lot longer to do than that. So I'm going to zoom right in and show you what some of these temperatures look like in the northern part of, of uh, in the northwest, excuse me. So this is Friday morning's lows. So when we're looking at these maps, I want to keep focused in on these colors right in through here. That's going to tell us where we're down they're approaching the freezing mark. Now certainly the higher elevations we're gonna have no problem getting down to the freezing mark but you can see here we're gonna watch specifically uh, right in through here in the Central Valley uh, excuse me, the, the Columbia Basin Valley here, getting around Yakima over toward the Tri-Cities and then getting down into parts of the Willamette Valley as well. Watch the temperatures in that area as I press forward uh, in this video here. Okay, we'll talk about California in just a moment. Okay, what do we notice? We notice that on Saturday our low temperatures still probably not quite getting to the freezing mark in the valley. So see it right in through here, but almost everywhere else uh, is going to be seeing some uh, sub-freezing temperature. Now remember, this isn't the coldest day. That's going to be Sunday, uh, the coldest. We don't see the freezing temperatures in the Snake River Valley just yet. But as we get into the day on Sunday, there we go. This is the day that I'm most concerned about, uh, the Sunday, Monday, uh, the overnight low temperatures here. We do see a widespread frost risk, uh, not only in the Snake River Valley here, but also uh, up around the Columbia River uh, getting into the basin. Now, certainly I'm not talking about Montana because Montana, much of the Mon Montana will be below freezing uh, because of this deep trough that's coming in. This is now Monday. Uh, we see very much the same thing. And now we're starting to see those temperatures get into that very dangerous 28 degrees. So my concern here is about uh, late potato harvest. Um, if we're doing that uh, and, and, and for some, something gets in there and freezes that, that membrane that surrounds the potato, uh, it, could, it could split it uh, and, and make it basically unstorable. Uh, for our wine grapes freezing for, um, you know, anything. What, what we're harvesting right now is very sensitive to these temperatures because we're in some places, again, 20 to 30 degrees cooler than average uh, for this time of year. So this is a this is a very important situation. Now I told you I wanted to talk about California. I don't see freezing temperatures getting into either the Sacramento Valley or the um, or in the San Joaquin. Of course not in the San Joaquin. We're just not going to be cold enough there. But this is going to be an elevation dependent feature and we're primarily going to focus on Northern California. As you go up the slopes here, it's just it's going to be hard to see on a map like this. But as you go up the slope, you're going to see the temperatures drop off very quickly uh, due to the presence of this deeper trough. So this is Monday morning lows. This is Tuesday morning. Now we're really cold here. We're going to be seeing temperatures in the teens, in the teens 
uh, in parts of the plains of Montana here. And again, we're talking flirting with that freezing mark along the Columbia River. Things begin to moderate by next Thursday into Friday. So we've got about a five-day stretch of very, very cold air that is coming in. And to show you why this is all happening, just take a look at the flow of the atmosphere. What's good about this animation is it also shows us when things begin to moderate and change. So let's step back and see that. Deeper trough definitely in place Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. By Tuesday, this thing ejects into the northern plains. See that? It gets right out of the west and gets into the northern plains. But kind of a reinforcing shot at some cool air comes in next weekend. But that trough there is nothing like the one that we just saw. Not nearly as deep. And then what we see with time is as we get out to next weekend, we tend to see the atmosphere trying to go into a bit of a higher or low pattern, which we talked about this week. And that's going to help temperatures moderate by the time we get into next weekend. But until then, we're dealing some, some, with some substantially colder air. Now, over the next five days, as we've already seen, we're anywhere between 10 and 25 to 30 degrees colder than average. And so this stretches all the way down the West Coast. Now, where you see the really cold anomalies right in through here in the day 6 through 10, that's where we're putting down snow. So the model is going to continue to bias that cold while the surface is covered in snow. So this is going to hit a big chunk of the northern Rockies. It's going to spread into the northern half of Montana, getting into southern Saskatchewan uh, and Alberta right over here. And so we notice that that particular cold area sticks around into the 11 to 15 day time period. So this is cooled by the snow. But moderation in temperature does return once we get past next Thursday, Friday, Saturday, that time period. So again, the next five to seven days, we are really flirting with some temperatures that are going to be potentially problematic for the northern part of the United States. All right. Excuse me, the northwestern part of the United States. Let's now switch our discussion over to precipitation. Now, over the last 30 days, um, we have been much above average in terms of precip. And I made a change in my color bar here. So now when you look at this, it goes all the way up to 550% of normal. So when you start to see shades that are this shade, we're talking double our average rainfall. And so over the last 30 days, a big chunk of the Northwest has been well above average. And we're still waiting on the rains to move pretty far to the south. And they don't usually do that. They don't usually get down here into this part of California uh, in, until we get deep into the month of October. So that's not atypical what I just circled there. But these rains have been a blessing, and at the same time, they've been a problem. The blessing first. Our latest drought monitor continues to show drought being eroded away here uh, in, in the northwest. And uh, we look at our drought monitor class change. This is fantastic. Over the last month in the northwest, we've seen up to a three-class improvement in some locations. Now that's the blessing. The problem is, is this rain has come in as we are approaching harvest. This has impacted the way that we have been harvesting hay specifically. Uh, while it's been fantastic for winter wheat germination, uh, trying to get some crop out. So I'm worried about our hay reserves as we go into fall, given that so many folks either were not allowed to get the hay harvest going because of rain or after it was harvested, it was rained upon. So this is, uh, you know, we mix the good with the bad here. Pasture health looks good overall in the Pacific Northwest, but the consequences of that rain, um, you know, we need to be weighed with the, with the benefits. Okay, moving forward. This is what we're looking at in terms of total accumulated precipitation through the next five days. Now, this is liquid equivalent. Liquid equivalent. So a lot of this right in through this corridor is falling as snow. So with that deeper trough coming in, let's take a look at the timing of that rainfall. Uh, first, I at least want to show you week two. Remember, by this time, we get that high or low pattern. So that's really going to focus a lot of the, 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 the motion of the atmosphere into that corridor I just highlighted there, which will be hitting parts of coastal Washington and Oregon, but really getting Getting, taking its aim much on, uh, on British Columbia there. Okay, so that's week two real quick. So let's take a look at what we're expecting here throughout the day on Friday, getting you through Saturday and early Sunday morning. There's our big low taking shape. Extremely windy all around this system. So everybody in the western United States prepare for a lot of windy conditions. But let's look at the timing of this. So throughout mid-morning this morning, it's widely scattered showers moving through uh, parts of Idaho, Montana, and Wyoming. But remember, the show gets going later in the day on Friday. There we go. Now you can see the low coming on. 
So widely scattered showers and some storms in some places here Friday evening in parts of the Pacific Northwest, all right? Keeping this going into the overnight hours, we're now seeing the trough really establish itself. So look at the rain we're anticipating in parts of the Snake River Valley. We see the first pulse of air, kind of of the both combination of Pacific air and yes, Gulf of Mexico moisture is getting into the system. So it's got two different sources of moisture and there it goes. This is now getting out to 11 a.m. Saturday, middle afternoon Saturday, Saturday evening, multi-day rainfall and snowfall event. I'll show you the snowfall totals in just a few moments. So this is now getting us into early Sunday morning. This system is slow moving. The trough is deep. It's going to take multi multiple days for it to get out of this area. And that's why we're anticipating such big rainfall uh, amounts. Switching us over now, let's pay close attention to where we see that snow showing up. Initially, it's going to be higher elevation. What's going to be tricky in Montana is knowing when we're going to switch over from the rain to snow. And that's going to be something you're going to have to watch in real time. Our models are never able to pick up on that. You're going to have to watch it in real time throughout that day. Now, this is Saturday evening. Look at the spacing of the isobars across Montana. That tells you how windy it's going to be. Look at the spacing of the isobars down here in California. Look how, I mean, it's just going to be a very, very windy next uh, about 60 hours. Now, the system is fully formed by midday Sunday and racing out to the plains. And you can see, look at the snow on the back side of this thing coming through the northern part of Montana, stretching through southern Alberta and southern Saskatchewan. It will also be snowing in the higher elevations in parts of um, uh, Oregon and Washington as well. And this is the time when the cold air is fully established behind this system as it moves on out. Next chance at rain could possibly be next end of next week, Thursday into Friday time period. And again, it's still cool enough there that we're going to get some mountain snow out of this. So now look, week two takes aim on British Columbia. See that there? Week two, British Columbia. Okay. Putting it all together, this is what we're looking at in terms of snowfall amounts. I know it's a zoomed out map. I'm going to show you a little more closely here. But certainly the what we've got coming down the coastal ranges here, getting into the Sierra Nevada, potentially picking up some snow in Northern California in the mountains. But the bigger snowfall event's going to be right in here in the Sawtooth, Payette National Forest, then getting over into the Northern Rockies. Now, because some of this flow is coming up slope like this, Okay, because remember, I told you two sources of moisture, Pacific moisture, Gulf of Mexico moisture. Take a look at what our snowfall totals are looking like in parts of Montana. As that snow comes up and hits the mountains, 36 to 50 inches of snow here. So this is going to be a, a, an incredible snowfall event here at the higher elevations. As you sneak out into lower elevations, there's the potential for 8 to 18 inches of snow in parts of of um in parts of of montana and uh wow i'm not usually talking like this at this time of year this is certainly a major early snowfall event for this region okay well um this weekend watch those temperatures watch the system evolve and be very safe please be safe um, and i'll give you an update on monday all right have a great weekend talk to you soon thank you